There are some updates in the companies that have gone on and others that, well, they never went on at all. <laughs> and I say that because of this LinkedIn profile for Mark McMurtry. It shows director slash COO, which I can only think is chief officiating officer or some some other title that he thinks is cool to be called coo but anyway he said that he was director slash whatever that is so director at Australia Pacific Life Sciences so of course I checked that information out and I found out that that's actually not the case at all so on the right hand side here is the ATSIC extract for Australia Pacific Life Sciences Proprietary Limited just as I showed you with Mark McMurtry and that was done on the 15th of February this year and as it shows that Natasha Melody McKay, Warren Eddie McKay are directors, shareholders there's previous ones, but none of them have got anything to do with Mark McMurtry. So he is not a director, not a COO of Australia Pacific Life Sciences at all. Maybe it's Australia Pacific Life Sciences Foundation, <laughs> because that wouldn't be registered anywhere. None of their foundations get registered anywhere. And you know, the, the fact about not registering your foundation with the ACNC, you know, Adrian Brunock made out that it's an option. Well, I suppose going to jail or staying out of jail might end up being an option too, if you want to look at it that way. But uh, yes, yeah, so... What I'm going to do today is that I've got about 44 different companies that I've been looking at. I've got another 10 to look at. But essentially, I've gone through the list. Hang on. The list of known companies, connections, associations, and shareholders. Then the next step was to actually take those that were clearly involved at the upper level with the companies to then look at what companies they're also involved in, which I haven't completed all those uh, company extracts yet, but there's some interesting things in there. But there are actually a few changes that have gone on since Mark Darwin got out of being a shareholder and director of Rainmaker Developments, Rainmaker Group, Cannabis Industries Australia and Nimbin Road Quarry. Now, interesting choice of the share allocation because I thought, well, before I looked at it, I thought, well, they'll just divvy up that share amongst themselves more. But no, instead, where Mark Darwin was a shareholder, this company up here, 27 Waratah Proprietary Limited, became the shareholder in place of Mark Darwin or Loved Ones Tribe, who was Mark Darwin through Caroline Coleman. So then that became an interesting thing. But then when you look at 27 Waratah, you actually find out that it is the shareholder of it 100% shareholder of it is your darky capital. Now, I've already done videos where I've said that 27 Waratah is actually <laughs> not a very original name named after the, the land parcel that they're looking at buying, that they are under contract to buy that land. And that's no different, really, than... Well, I suppose what they've got with Peter Van Lyshout, well, no different. Let's hope the vendor actually gets paid. But that's due in a very short amount of time to be settled on anyway. So 
don't really know what's going on with that at the moment so it's just uh, a matter of wait and see but uh, this one 27 Waratah came back into it last year and came up as a cross directorship for Cherie Stokes and no wonder because Cherie Stokes is the sole shareholder and director as she does she starts up these companies and then when they get them to a certain position they uh, make different share dis distributions and people start buying in and in comes all the value in the shares well that's what it looked like with Mount Burrell commercial as well so I've done some more completed searches on these extra ones that came up like Mount Burrell Caravan Park as well again Cherie Stokes is sole director and uh, secretary of that and well, hang on and Adrian Brennock was actually sole director and shareholder I would say I don't know exactly when the shares moved from out of his name into Nightcap Constructions but the current sole shareholder is Nightcap Constructions so then when you go and have a look at Nightcap Constructions you find that Nightcap Constructions is yet again sole director and secretary Cherie Stokes and the shareholders are Nepi, Adrian Brennock in his wife's name and Dixon Rainmaker which is Philip Dixon so these um, different searches that I've completed are all little aspects of companies that they started up to deal with different things and as you would expect at the Mount Bar Barrel Caravan Park because the caravan park has different laws and everything that associate to it as opposed to the rest of the businesses to set that up separately as a business rather than under the Mount Burrell commercial um, entire lot so that if something happened to the caravan park it wouldn't pull down the other businesses with it or vice versa I suppose you could say but I mean if it's all <laughs> getting pulled down from the same place uh, it's not going to matter now of the folders that you can see on the screen here a lot of them uh, actually represent shareholders in Mount Burrell Commercial or some other company and there's actually very few that represent the actual operating company vehicles of what I'd call the upper management and how they maneuver and direct everything and hold on to all these different facets and some of them are actually deregistered quite a few of them actually Wollumbin Dreamtime, Rainmaker Eco Investments, Organamazing, Bulla Bulla Community um, yes, there's quite a few of them but you had to go back and look at the companies that were actually registered at the time that were being used for different things now this Bulla Bulla community isn't actually any of the upper level management that's involved with that it's actually one of the investors he started off that company name so that one's actually not anything to do with the current development but the past lost investors this one here I think uh, from memory is Adam Williams at his super in Mount Burrow Commercial and boundary properties here that's again Christy Brennock that's a deregistered company as as I said there are a few of them boundary properties claim to have been owed money by her husband's company Wollumbin Horizons and that was part of the liquidation so any names of companies that came up I've looked at and some I'm still to look at because now I've done the search on the people's names to find out right let's see what all their dealings are or any that you can find out at ATSIC anyway 
So, um, yes, Cannabis Industries Australia, again, very interesting choices about how they changed their um, shareholdings. Again, I thought that that would be something where it would, the three of them would just give themselves more shares, but instead 27 Waratah Proprietary Limited. Now, the interesting thing about Cannabis Industries Australia is that it's got uh, registered that it's got a strike-off action in progress, but yet I can't find any at seek notice to say that anything has been served or when to them to indicate that that strike-off action is in progress. progress. Because... For this to happen, it has to happen under a section of the law. So it's one form or another. Um, if they've got return mail and they can't get any response, they will send out a, a strike-off notice, basically saying, if you don't get back to us within two months, we're going to strike, uh, you're going to be deregistered. So this one here is a little bit different. There's no record of it. Um... And maybe because it is a strike-off rather than a deregistering. Why it would be stricken off, I don't know. There's actually nothing to show. There's no records lodged at ATSIC that I can actually see. So it's in the report. It's actually stating that there is a strike-off action in progress. But nothing can be identified as to what where that has originated from not at this stage anyway I mean you have to understand that they might still be actually processing the details of that so um, it's not available or it still might be part of I don't know they could have an ongoing investigation so they're not going to give out any more information they're just going to say there's a strike off action in progress I honestly don't know because usually there's a part of ATSIC where you can go if something has, if a company's been sent a letter stating, well, we got mail returned. If you don't answer this within two months, we're going to deregister you. And that's striking you off, but I don't know, this one seems a little different. There's absolutely no record of it for where there would, should be an ATSIC notice. So, yeah. Anyway, that's just one of those peculiarities, like so many things. You've got to let play out to see what's going on with it. So I'm just going to give a bit of a zoom through on most of them. But the ones like Rainmaker Developments and Rainmaker, the ones that I've got to go in and show you because there's a few of them and Sometimes, if I told you off the top of my head from my memory, I could be wrong. But others are very easy and simple. Like this one here with 27 Waratah, Sheree Stokes, sole director and secretary, and Yadaki Capital, 100% shareholder. Now, those that are invested in Mount Burrell Commercial with superannuation is AB Williams, self-managed super fund, Mark Bloomer, um, where are we? Mecca Super Investments. Mecca Super Investments is uh, Mark and Beck Fagan. So uh, some of these are just purely people that have invested their super funds in there and those that have actually got a company vehicle by which they've done it and they've been named because the individuals that are named as shareholders, obviously, they don't have a company. There is no ATSIC record on them. So they are just an individual with a share rather than a company. But other ones that are associated with Mount Burrell Commercial include Calmed Proprietary Limited, Katz Corporation. Well, Calmed Proprietary Limited is... Ed and Carmel Schumann. 
Cats Corporation is Cherie Stokes and, uh, well, some relative <laughs> that shares the same name. Cole Malia, I thought, was going to end up being uh, Carmel and Ed Schumann, but it isn't. That's actually Matthew Perryman. I'll just check that because, yes, some of the information hasn't quite stuck in my head yet because they do cross over with the different companies. Yes, that's Matthew Perryman because Foundation Enterprises is the one where he gets in with his, well, it appears to be his mate, um, Delaney. We'll get to him in a minute. <laughs> Oh, it's slow. So, yes, Matthew Perryman is Cole Malia, and also High Fusion Finance and High Fusion Proprietary Limited. And the Delaney's that bought in as shares are Foundation Enterprises, and they have also got them in there with Matthew Perryman. So this is the Delaney's here at Foundation Enterprises. Sorry, I got that wrong. I thought that was the company vehicle. It's actually the High Fusion Finance, I think. We'll just go and have a look at that. That's why I say is that Brent and um, Matthew Perryman clearly know each other because they're both put in individually and also jointly in a company which I will just show you now. So this is High Fusion Proprietary Limited. Well it's got two PLs in there, that's a bit of a mistake. But um, as you can see here Matthew Perryman and Brent Delaney are directors together in High Fusion. Matthew Perryman made High Fusion Finance for himself Brent Delaney has got Foundation Enterprises and all of those in those different names actually have shares in Mount Burrell Commercial in the name of High Fusion, uh, High Fusion Finance, Foundation Enterprises and Cole Malaya and Carmel and Ed Schumann. Oh, sorry, yes, um, yeah. So I'm sorry, getting a little bit confused here. There's lots of shareholders. And these ones here seem to be associated with um, mortgages or loans. That High Fusion, it looks like, have given out the first uh, loan or mortgage and that's been paid back or it hasn't been paid back. They've paid back they've got a second mortgage through high finance high fusion finance and foundation enterprises has also added towards part of what these three would make up to be more lenders than shareholders but they've used shares in companies to secure their interests in the actual business because Mount Burrell Commercial is a business that's got tangible assets so you could have something over that asset to secure your interest in it and become a secured creditor. Likewise NCV Enterprises has an, a, an asset, the land. So that also can be secured by creditors and become secured creditors. Now the recent contract for the sale of 27 Waratah Court has meant that there will also be another land asset that will be carried by a company. Then as part of something well, this one, Jesk Holdings and Winner Super, are actually part of NCV Enterprises. When I searched them, I found Craig Oldroyd. Now, Craig Oldroyd is very well known 
to be associated with the OSTF and Mark McMurtry. And he posts his support for him. Now, I also believe that um, they've secured shares because of also lending money. That they don't want, um, you know, they don't want the share for the long-term benefit. They want the money back. So there have been a fair few circumstances where investors have unsecured loans in that respect because there was nothing for them to actually offer them to to give them because 3222 hadn't been purchased back yet and nobody could you know they couldn't really offer them anything and they really hadn't secured Peter Van Leishout's land either and you know the thing being too is that anything can happen where uh you know, I don't see, well, even if I did see the the development application going through with all its problems, there's a, there's a lot of other ones that I think they've got to worry about first that have got absolutely nothing to do with the council. And I say that because, you know, when you follow, when you want to find out things, you need to follow the paper trail and the money trail. And once you've started looking at the companies and you found out the people that are involved that's when you start looking at the people involved and it's like with with these people at NICAP on Minjimbal it is clear to see and everybody says it that those that everyone knows like <laughs> Mark McMurtry and Adrian Brennock well Adrian Brennock's a bankrupt of course he's supposed to have no money but you know they're just ordinary people with no money, busted ass broke. So where does all the money come from when there's not a steady flow of investors? There has to be money coming from somewhere to support all the all of the activities. And when you are looking at accounts, that's the first place you start looking is, you know, where the money could have come from, where it's gone, how it was spent. And uh, interesting too is that like with when you're looking at any records to do with them, like you look at the uh, accounts for Rothwall where all the monies were supposed to be paid in. Even when it was presented to the court, it was missing one page. So without that one page of transactions that were deposits and withdrawals, you can't reconcile the account and so you know you go oh well it's just poor records you know we left it for so long or you know when we did it I couldn't find this and we just yeah I thought it was that date but it could have been you know the earlier or could have been later you know they make up all these excuses when in actual fact it's it's more what I see as a deliberate technique but anyway (laughs) Let's move on through the rundown. <laughs> Kemp Cove is 100% Peter Van Leishout. Loved Ones Tribe, 100% Caroline Komen. And now Loved Ones Tribe is out of any shareholdings. And they, where Loved Ones Tribe was, that's where 27 Waratah Proprietary Limited has been put in. So we'll skip those ones. Moat Holdings, Moat Investments. I can't remember which one off the top of my head was the one actually in uh, Mount Burrell Commercial. I saw both of them, so I didn't know. I I figured they both must be associated with Richard Moat, so I did both of them. So, But other than that, that's pretty much Richard Moat's thing. Mount Burrell Caravan Park, Cherie Stokes was Adrian Brennock up until the time of his final bankruptcy hearing. Seems like his bankruptcy changed a lot of things for him. Didn't stop him becoming the developer of a multi-million dollar project though. And Nightcap Constructions is the shareholder. Mount Burrell Commercial, well, interesting things happened there because the last search I did, I missed 
out by one day of one change where Cherie Stokes and Philip Dixon were both share or both directors together. The next day though there was something lodged with Aztec where uh, Philip Dixon resigned and left Cherie as the sole share uh, sole shareholder uh, sole director director and secretary. So Philip Dixon is out of directing Mount Burrell Commercial. He's still directing a lot of the others, like his uh, Cannabis Industries and Nimbin Road Quarry, Rainmaker Developments. I mean, he's still got the sole directorship now of all of these, but he's no longer associated with Mount Burrell Commercial. So NCV Enterprises, now I'm going to bring this one up again because this is something that uh, ultimately is going to go to query with ATSIC as why the shared distribution with this does not balance. I'll forget that stuff in blue, I figured that one out. <laughs> but um, there is 1,091 shares apparently issued. But down here, according to all their tallies of the shares, there's a two share difference. And the thing was that the last document lodged was to actually alter the previous document that was about share distribution. So whether that's complicated it, made it wrong, or just made it less wrong, <laughs> I don't know. But ultimately this... Uh, this does not balance and it's something that ATSIC needs to look at and ask the question where are those other two shares because if two shares say here represents say one share represents hmm, let's say about 350,000 and let's say that two shares represented say 700,000 well then that would be a substantial amount of difference in the share distribution that this person could actually expect back. And I know that it says on here that every share is only worth a dollar, but you know, that's, that's not really what these people are actually paying for it. Like there is, um, payments made directly that ended up in NCV Enterprises in the name of Jesk Holdings. So thereby, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to say too many things about that might confuse people because as I've shown you that there are a fair few companies involved here and I've still got another 10 more to actually sort of really have a look into because it's been asked by many people that there are certain people that are involved in this. You can understand their motivation, their reasoning. But then there's people that you just cannot understand it. Why, why even someone like Derek Zillman is continuing in the face of everything that's, well, what I see down the track. It defies logic. <laughs> and that's where it brings to mind something that you'd see in Star Trek when they, you know, they say when you rule out all things that are logical <laughs> or plausible, what you're left with is probably what it is. <laughs> Unknown. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I mean, we can all make a million guesses. And if you go back, on some of my videos, you will hear some of my guesses. They might get a little close than some. <laughs> well, they're just guesses, you know, because when you don't know what's going on, you ponder the possibilities. Because a lot of these companies do not have a financial means. Mount Burrell Commercial, <laughs> I mean, there's nothing of the business left. And now, they're spending money to buy land that, well, I'm assuming, and I'm not, I don't know this 100%, but I'm just assuming it's no coincidence 
that 27 Waratah Court is being purchased and 27 Waratah Proprietary Limited is the name of a company that Shuri set up. So, you know, it's kind of, I mean, it could be a really big mistake to think that they are actually wanting to purchase 27 Waratah Court in the name of 27 Waratah Proprietary Limited. But now I've taken the piss out of them for it. They might just change that. Oh, but hang on. They can't change the name on the contract because the, the people selling it don't want to do that. Lovely people too. <laughs> it's funny how so many have ended up down in Tassie that there's an association with Tassie. You know, Rhyme Earth Healers from Tassie and um, there was the wood thing with Peter Van Leishout. He's, he had dealings down here with that company that went belly up. And then a really interesting thing, an association comes up with when you look at Derek Zilman's company associations. And there's a company called Lake Lakes Sinclair Hydro. And it's like, Lake Sinclair, that, that's in Tassie though. But sure enough, just hang on. It's one of the few companies that he's actually associated with that can be searchable, but back in 2019, they said website launching soon. <laughs> See, copyright 2019, nothing there. And this is the exact company that Derek Zillman is a director of, Lake Sinclair Pumped Hydro, and that's set up out of Sydney. So I don't know what he's got going on there because a lot of his other ones are to do with sapient, sapient infrastructure, sapient developments, and all these other sapient names. Now, before I looked up sapient, I thought, well, you know, like homo sapien, um, and I thought, well, sapient is a being or something like that. So I thought, well, let's see what um, sapient actually means. So I looked it up. It means wise, or attempting to appear wise. Synonyms, wise, sensible, prudent, politic, shrewd, astute, canny, sagacious. I don't think we need to go into it anymore, but one would expect that those associated with sapient companies would be any of those synonyms. Wise. And that's where Derek Zillman is director of two of these companies that have got Sapient in their name. And it's like, it's all about um, buying and selling businesses and everything. So you can see at the level where funding is coming in for, uh, well, it's actually available to the Nightcap on Mingimble development through Derek Zillman. But his association with Nightcap on Mingimbal would have to be not a sound business decision. Does not. It's not sapient. <laughs> you know? It's not a sapient decision to be involved with, well, a political extremist who's um, upset so many people <laughs> and a bankrupt that, um, yes, everything is just going downhill as far as their public image. But, uh, yeah. So when, as I said, that I've got still a fair few companies to look at in association with, well, some of them were very easy to look at because all their company associations were associated purely with Nightcap on Mingimble. But then there's a couple of names that have come in that were associated with Christy Brannock. And you see, because Adrian Brannock is a bankrupt, anything that he would want to do, he would put it in his wife's name. So you've got to check out Christy Brannock and see what she's doing. 
Now she registered two different businesses in February 2019 on the same day. And now they might be legitimate businesses, you know, she's doing her own thing. Or it might just be Adrian Brunock putting his wife's name onto these things so he can conduct the activities that he wants to through them. And they're called Buddies Consulting and Budrel Consulting or something. They had two div very similar names, both started on the same day. And it's just purely Christy and Brenock or any version of Christy Dash Anne or Christy Anne or Brenock Christy Anne that Mr. Brenock might like to actually put down when he's making these online typing in everything and pretending that he's actually been his wife when he's setting these things up. And, well, that's what I believe would be more than likely to happen than Christy setting them up herself. <laughs> She'd sure say to him, well, you set it up. You know how to do these things. So he would have done. So even if, uh, you know, it was for her, he still would have done it. So when you start to look like I did when I looked for rain makeup, I started to realise that sapient in itself must be a concept and that that concept applies across all businesses that are going to use sapient in their name. Because this sapient capital partners, which is exactly the same company that Derek Zillman is a com uh, director in, isn't in Australia, it's in America. It's the same thing that you're getting with the Rainmaker companies, you're getting with these sapient capital partners. And the only one that looks like he's got anything here is sapient infrastructure, and yet that all that is is just basically confirmation of an ATSIC record existing on that company which I already know, so that's kind of useless information anyway. But, um, and you've got to be careful of sites like this. I came across one the other day where I thought, well, I'll just check it out and see how good it is. I put in Wollumbin Horizons uh, ABN number, uh, ACN number, and it told me it was registered and fine. I put in deregistered companies I knew were deregistered. They again told me they were registered and fine. So whenever you're getting any company information, never rely on anything like this that comes up. You need to go, well, here in Australia, you need to go to ATSIC. It's too easy to go to their website and search to see if that company record exists. And in a lot of circumstances too, if all you need is just an extract of a current or a historical uh, extract, it is cheaper to actually do it through ATSIC than any of the other providers. They always charge you more. So yes, dealing directly with ATSIC for the records, nine times out of 10 is going to be better for those that don't actually have a bulk um, well, bulk billing or, or unlimited access type thing. So, yes, anyway. Now, oh, this one's actually in Canada, Sapient Capital Partners. That actually, that Toronto, Canada has actually come up in association with Mark Darwin's place of birth because he was born in Canada. And that's a interesting thing too, that a lot of people actually thought he was born in the UK, but no, he's actually born in Canada. So here's Mark Darwin's state of birth for Wollumbin Dreamtime, which was originally set up initially for 3222 and the Bulla Bulla community. But because of what Mark Darwin had been doing with Freedom Summits and My Debt's Gone and Creator Foundation, 
The banks wouldn't lend him any money, his name was Mud. So Wollumbin Dreamtime couldn't be used, neither could Mark Darwin. That's where Adrian Brennock came in and Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited. So there's a time where there is a crossover between Wollumbin Dreamtime and Wollumbin Horizons right in the early beginning where people didn't even know was it Wollumbin Dreamtime, was it Wollumbin Horizons. The early documentation actually shows it was Wollumbin Dreamtime as well and then it was changed to Wollumbin Horizons. And so if it wasn't going to be Mark Darwin in charge of it all, then it was going to be Adrian Brennock in charge of it all. And if you notice here, the Voxes came out, well, are recorded early part of 2016 through to no later than August 2016. And Richard Moat was appointed to Wollumbin Dreamtime after all of this why I don't know they even kept the company going they must have been using it to operate some other part of their business but they had the realty part going the commercial part going well they hadn't actually got that going yet officially known to people because they were dumping the <laughs> the ones that were complaining at uh, Bulla Bulla and uh, all those that would play the game can jump on board with them as they expand out into Peter Van Leishout's land and what you see today. So I just brought that up to show you that um, Mark Darwin, his date of birth, Toronto, Can Canada. So, you know, when you see something like that, you think, well, you know, that's like someone saying that someone's um, born in Tasmania and all, because I must know them it's like no it's a big place and uh, well yes related to a fair few people but not in the city most of my relatives are in the country and uh, yeah so <laughs> anyway now with the companies like Nightcap Construction, Rainmaker Group, Rainmaker Eco, well that's deregistered, Rainmaker Developments, Nyepi, Nimming Road, Quarry, Nightcap, all of these ones mix in with the same people. There are only a couple of differences that come about with Nightcap Realty. Was originally Cherie Stokes, then Richard Moke came in, and it was both of them, and then uh, Cherie Stokes got out so it's Richard Moat now and hang on I'll just check because I'm pretty sure that uh, this one Katz Corporation has got who is Cherie Stokes as well and has got shares yes there we have it Katz Corporation holds 50% of the shares in Nightcap Realty and that's Cherie Stokes and well a relative I'll just show you that hang on so this is Katz Corporation Katz Corporation has got I'm pretty sure 400 shares doubled up on the share than most others in Mount Barrel Commercial so as you can see that it's a share distribution equally between Cherie and Sheena and an interesting thing too I noticed when I was looking at addresses today is that over a period of time you can see people that changed their addresses. They moved, they went somewhere and they gave a different address. Well, it looks like that now Cherie is using an address that used to look like an old address but now she's saying it must be a current address. And the thing being that I think that a lot of these addresses are just addresses that well we they used to live there because generally speaking the only contact they're going to get from ANSIC is going to come to the contact address that they've given them which is well I need to actually check on that with all of them but they most of them seem to have the same PO box in Upper Mount Cravat 
So they're all getting their mail to the same letterbox, to the same place. Now that's uh, excluding ones like this Cats Corporation where clearly when you're looking at something like this, like you looked at ones where there was the two Delaney's clearly husband and wife or they could be brother and sister, I don't know, but obviously related and it's a family thing. You expect that all their addresses are associated with home and in this situation too again it could be mother daughter could be auntie sister you know cousin uh that she's that they've been in business together for for a long time so that's where you expect that their addresses reflect you know their personal life but i don't think they do not in this circumstance I don't, I think this might be Cherie's current address, but when she registered the new company in 27 Waratah, I'll just show you that. So here's 27 Waratah. And as you can see, this address here in Runaway Bay has come up in association with other people. It's an address, oops. I think that's, I need to check that. I think that might got got that wrong. It should have been Unit 7. But anyway, um, other people seem to have been using this address. And there also seems to be the instance where Cherie has used it in the past. Then she moved to this new address. And then now she's back here again. So... To me, that's actually indicating that she is, well, she's not, I don't think she's at this address. I don't think, I think that might have been an address she might have lived at once. Like, I've got so many addresses I could put down too, that at one stage or another, that was my address. And it's correct. But I haven't been there in a long time. So... That's what I'm getting the sense of here is that I wouldn't actually know where Cherie Stokes's current address is because the thing being is that all these records are actually supposed to be your current residential address. So this address here should match here and it should match every other directorship that she's got the addresses should all be the same because if you want update one record you need to update all records anytime you move or change anything about the company you need to register that change and what also seems to be common is that they don't register a change in even their contact address so when an something goes out from ATSEC, it gets returned to them and then it triggers a two-month warning of we're going to deregister you if you don't respond. And, you know, there's a 50-50 response on that because clearly, I mean, they send out the mail to the same address that it was returned from to say, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I don't know. How does that work? That's like yeah sending to the when people have sent you mail saying well we've sent mail here but we don't know if it's the person and it's like because it was returned to sender it's like so you're actually sending it to the person how would you be able uh, yeah sorry <laughs> their confusion confuses me why they would even think that now i'm just going to finish this up with quickly talking about the other little ones i'm not going to go into the details of the major companies that are linked together with them all because that will actually be one where it's showing them all together more and i wanted to do this video to show of the changes in the company before i actually started to bring out the um, financial estimations that I've done and I have to call them estimations because it is a matter of taking what has been given 
And granted, I must say, though, that I'm surprised at how much I've been able to patch together from all the information that has come from, well, many different sources. And that when I started putting them all together to take a look at things, well, I had a lot of lists and I thought, well, this is going to take a little bit longer. And I don't think um, I'm going to give it to you in all detail. Uh, basically a ballpark figure of this is essentially the, the monies that have been coming through. These look like the expenditures. Like they seem to have had um, so many different uh, expenses for accountants and lawyers and town planners. And there, when Mark Darwin was still involved, there's a lot of, you know, probably what ended up hundreds of thousands end up in sales and marketing costs. So there was a, a lot of things that when you're getting money in, there's only a, a limited number of people that have paid in money over a period of time and a limited number of resources. And then you look at all the money that they've spent on all these different other things and it becomes very, very clear that they have got where they have just not by investors' money but by other means as well. And it's been able to be identified that they have received several... Uh, well, they're on their second mortgage at the Mount Burrow Commercial <laughs> And first it was High Fusion, now it's High Fusion Finance. And Jess Coldings, I believe, too, would also be another financial vehicle for a loan. Now, I'm not 100% sure on these things. At this stage, they are what you would say my best interpretation of the information that I've been given. Of course, if I receive more information and different information... I update that, but other than that, that's the conclusions that I'm being led to by what I'm looking at. Now, so I'm going to leave out all those other ones down here. You know about Nyepi and all of those anyway. Van Leishout Treasury came up simply because it's associated with 100 tenths that is actually right next door to where they want to put the Nightcap Village. So, of course, I had a look. Uh, to see, well, clearly Van Leishout on Peter Van Leishout's land. It was a good chance it was actually going to be Peter Van Leishout. But again, you have to check these things and verify the facts because you can't say, well, yeah, it's got the name, it might be, because this Zilma nominees and Zimmerland, I actually thought Zimmerland originally was Derek Zilman using a bit of a play on his name. Don't know why. But Zimmerland is purely Peter Van Leishout and Zilman nominees is Derek uh, Zilman. And I think his wife as well, 50-50. Now, Ren Realty number one is actually Emon Lowe. And Emon Lowe, well, I've been listening to <laughs> some of the Voxes He's such an adorable little puppy. He's so cute. <laughs> oh, the way AB talks about him is like, you good boy, Sid. Go fetch. Uh, yeah, it, it's like, sorry, you know. I mean, like, I, I think he's been the one that's been trolling me on my channel under that name. But, you know, even the way that AB talks about him, that's not respect, mate, to give to your other mates to talk about him like that. But then again, it's not respect the way you talk about Gunnam either, is it? Huh? And I called him that because I just didn't want you to get confused with the other Mark who is... Well, is he out or is he still in in some other way? Because I have investigated uh, Mark Darwin's current holdings and he doesn't have many. He's only got one. And... Uh, <laughs> It's in a big company and he's got a one share. He could be involved with 
anything on a memorandum of understanding agreement though because not all people that are actually members of Nightcap or Menjimble have actually paid money in to do it like Peter Van um, Peter Van Lyshout Max Egan hasn't paid money in he was gifted a share Mark McMurtry as you hear on the Voxes he was also gifted a share uh, Derek Zillman was gifted a share because he lent the money and in place of that they gave him a share. Then you've got ones like, um, well, say Pete Evans or Tyler Tolman that have a large database of contacts for people, of people for them to utilise that may create sales. So they create a memorandum of understanding that we will give you a share and for each sale that you bring in out of your database if they say that you sent them you know when you go on their website and you say how did you find us or who you know who sent you if you click one of their names they will get a sales commission as set out in that that agreement I mean, it would be just a standard sales contract after you've, well, I'm just assuming this. I wouldn't know 100% because there has to be some kind of way. Nightcap on Minjimbo have confirmed that people are members and we know that they have not, well, I know <laughs> that they that they didn't pay over money for it, like Max Egan and Peter Evans. And I'm pretty sure that Tyler Tolman wouldn't have paid over any money when I can bring up accounts for, um, well, back in 2016 to, to 18, uh, Tyler Tolman was paid 137000 in commission. So he's not paying money, he's getting paid money. So clearly... You know, if there's a sales commission paid to Tyler Tolman, he bought in people to earn that sales commission. Or maybe it was just an agreement that, you know, you can use my database for X amount of time and it will cost you X amount of dollars. You can whack it up as sales commission whether you get any or not. I want X amount of dollars. As I said, I don't know. The terms of most agreements are unknown unless you actually have them dragged out in court for everyone to see and that's when you get to know the details of what once used to be private but now well it's pretty much public once it goes to court <laughs> so that's why people should just be upfront anyway because if you are taken to court it's most court documents are publicly accessible yeah it might cost you to get records and copies and everything it might take a bit of a process to even get it but they are all still publicly accessible so it goes to court it comes out it's on public record and that's why there are some that actually go to all that effort to suppress court records so that it cannot be available for public viewing that only those small people that were involved you know in that little group may know what went on anybody else can't know what's going on because that would be damaging to my reputation that's what jason Bedell's tried to do <laughs> anyway did you notice he actually well whether it was him or ncv enterprises but see the only ones that can actually claim defamation and use a court order are the ones ncv enterprises or whichever company vehicle they're saying they're using it through or whatever <laughs> you know they wear so many hats there's 45 on this page and most that I've got to still look at are associated with Derek Zillman and Cherie Stokes to see where well they've got the most activity going on so I looked at the ones that had the least going on <laughs> did them first because yes Derek Zillman's got quite a few companies 
to actually go through and see. And most of these, he's not a shareholder, he's a director. So it'll be interesting to see what he's in charge of and who the directors or the shareholders are. Because none of the shareholders are connected or seemingly connected with Nightcap on Minjimbal. But then again, that said and done, I have not done a company search to see how many shares they own on all the companies either. So there are still surprises to be found out there. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I could have done that with all of them in the first place. But anyway, it's getting really long video. Sorry about that. And I still didn't... That's why I thought I'd cut through all the details on the main companies that... Because Nightcap Village Holdings, Nightcap Construction, um, Nightcap Village, Rainmaker Developments, Rainmaker Group Holdings, even Dixon Rainmaker and their other little sort of member companies that they use, they all sort of blur together. As I said, a lot of these are deregistered. Bulla Bulla, Boundary Properties, Wollumbin Dreamtime, again amazing. You know, um, Loved Ones Tribe has got nothing to do with it now. Although, as long as you are, were a director or a shareholder or whatever of a company during that time, you are still responsible for anything that occurred during that time. This one up here, Australia Pacific Life Sciences, that Mark McMurtry claims he is the director of, he is not. So a few months ago, I forgot to mention this one too, because uh, Mark Darwin isn't at the forefront all the time, but he's still there, he's part of it. Now, when I discovered him under Kaz Darwin Channel, selling these Renault caravans he advertised on Facebook and I just checked then that Facebook page for uh, retro caravan renovations has actually been closed down and I dare say that the email that he's got as a contact address has been changed as well but that's not the point of why I'm actually bringing this up my point is that he is trading as Retro Caravan Renovations. Now if you look up for an ABN, Retro Caravans um, Renovations is a trading name. You go to the company that that's the trading name for, which is Creative Vision Enterprise Proprietary Limited. And you do not find anything to do with Mark Darwin. It is a woman called Jessica Driver. So, again, I'm <laughs> not surprised, um, Mark Darwin is operating a business using a business name, Retro Caravan Renovations. All of that leads to Creative Vision Enterprise, Proprietary Limited, and to Jessica Driver. It's got nothing to do with Mark Darwin. So, yes. See, if he's operating a small business on an ABN and he's using that as a business name, he still needs to say, that's my business name that I'm trading under. You can't just go, I'm using that name. It, it's either falsely representing someone else or I don't know, maybe Jessica Driver is his, I don't know, has he got a sister? He could have a sister that, you know, that's her married name or something. I don't know. I mean, it's it's possible. But there is no surface association, not even linked with addresses or anything, that can tie in Creative Vision Enterprises to Mark Darwin and Retro Caravan Renovations. Anyway, I was going to finish it up. I was just summing everything up and I thought, oh, I forgot to tell you about Mark Darwin. <laughs> so there you go. I told you. And there are some searches that 
I did get to the stage with where I had done several capital Z or Z, however you want to pronounce it, and only one of them appeared to be associated with Derek Silman. One, another one was deregistered, and another one that was actually only started uh, mid through 2020 did have um, directors and names on there that may be associated in some other way. It's something that I need to look at a little bit further into the other company associations that he's got, which is um, the Sapient and uh, the um, Eastern Consortium. Got two Eastern Consortium uh, companies that were started on the same day. So you can just imagine people sitting down and thinking, right, I'm going to achieve this, I want to do this, I'm going to need a company vehicle to do this and that. So they make up one name called this and one name called that and bang, boom, they're both done. You can see that because, hang on, this image down the bottom here, this one here, is actually all of these companies are registered on exactly the same day. Dixon Rainmaker, Rainmaker Group Holdings, Rainmaker Developments and Nimbin Road Quarry. All on the 9th of March 2017 in Queensland. So it's all online. It's too easy. You just type away, push send. And if you've got a um, digital signature that you can easily submit these things online, yeah, it's too easy. So there is the ability for someone to actually just, yeah, create these companies on the spot for whatever purpose they need. And that's why when you have four that were created on the same day, that it's very clear to see that they're all on the same page about achieving something. And considering that it all involved Mark Darwin, Philip Dixon, and Adrian Brennock. And we know that Adrian Brennock had to get out because he was bankrupt. And Mark Darwin got out because, well, I think he got out because AB went bankrupt. Mark Darwin had trouble. Um, he couldn't set up a London Dreamtime and Buller Buller. Through him, he had to get AB because the banks wouldn't have anything to do with him. So, you know, if he couldn't use his bro, well, he wasn't much good to him anymore. <laughs> so, he bounced. <laughs> and speaking of bounce, I'm going to bounce on out of here and say catch you next time. <laughs> Bye.